friends there it is like in the list you can replace the elements you can change the elements you can add there you can remove from there you can go over the things there in the list you have a lot of options to do now if we go with the tuples we say tuple are not mutable the major difference we compare between the list and tuples they don't have any methods for adding removing and any like different methods only two methods are there for the tuples what you can go is count and index okay so if i go with the directory of your tuple so it comes in the uh, first bracket or the parenthesis bracket you can say on right it comes under the, those things and as you can see that count and index only works here all right so uh, how you make is like very simple in the list you were using the square brackets here we are using the parenthesis brackets okay so we will be uh, taking it as like let's say this is tuple one and the numbers five right one two three four and five And if I need to see the type of D1, we would be getting of okay some elements. Tuple. Right? Now in the list case you have an option of adding something using add or append. Yeah, that you were having. Now here if you say any methods. So in the total directory, you are not going to get any of the methods as you can see over there. So count and index would work. Right, like if I say T1 plus 3. And if I see you and T1 would not be done, right? Because it can concatenate only tuples. So this gives you a hint that tuples can be added with tuples. Hmm? Right. So what we can do is we can create a tuple of 3 and then we can add it with t1 right so we have to create a tuple of a single element so for that what we need to do is we will just write 3 like this and for now if we see the type of this 3 this is an integer but as soon i make a comma over there it becomes a tuple the comma <coughs> says that there are more than one element there could be more than one element so if there could be more than one element it would be a type of a tuple that's it right so t2 i would define at this or uh, let me write here as like t1 plus a tuple of 3 comma and i could get there as 3 now if i say like uh, t1 dot count or if I say this is a tuple, this dot count the number of three. Oh, sorry. Let's say it's two, right? Because it's having two. So count for function works accordingly, and the rest you have index values. Mm, so. Again, you can go with that using the index. Oops. So we can paste it for index of 3. And you get 2 again, right? Because 0, 1, 2 as was there in the list. That is your first preference, right? That you can go with. Okay. Next. <coughs> so this is all about tuples. Very less. Okay. Now uh, coming to sets. So tuples is there, no, six. Now, these have very, you can say as um, unique elements. So, yeah. So can you please uh, explain that index once, once again? Index. That point index. Okay, yeah. Sure. Tuples, uh -huh, that one only. Okay, see, 
uh, in the 11th call uh, you can say box right so 11th input i have written t1 plus 3 of that right so there i am getting 1 2 3 4 5 3 right so 2 3 is are there okay now here i am searching for index of 3 so in this complete thing i want to find to, in which places i can find 3 right so the beginning place okay. would be giving you the values like in the list also so 0 1 and 2 so 3 would be the outcome like 2 would be the okay. outcome right okay. Hmm. okay now here we till now we have seen in the list and tuples we can duplicate the elements in the sets when we talk about we say here are no duplications or we say there are unique elements okay so like when you're making projects in pandas 2 you would be using some unique function np.unix pd.unix or you can use set there in place too right? so set could also play a good role there so and these are uh, very much similar to the mathematics uh, sets what we have read up okay so things are easy here in sets but you have to understand it right so uh, let's see uh, what all are the functions here so we find some better functions like from add to update this much so i write sf equals to this so all these are sf how many functions are there 17 functions uh, let me even yeah this would be better so these are the functions of <coughs> your set set functions okay just a minute <coughs> So let's start with the very first like add append similar to the list so if i have a set and set are always written in braces right? this third one okay so here set one is having elements here one five seven three two like that okay. so the type of s1 is given to be a set okay so S1 has got elements 1, 5, 7, 3, 2. If I print my S1, I would be getting 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. So here there is an order. But when you will see in the books, there it is written that everywhere that these are unordered. Why unordered? Because the way we are writing, we are not getting the result in the same manner. Like in a list, if I write 1, 3, 8, 2, 5, 4, I get the same thing in a set if I write one five four three sorry so I get something different man it's like in ascending you can see on even if I write in the characters D A C A C D right so you have an ascending order basically here is there something else I can help with? Oh, I've got my CD and I put it just a minute. Stop speaking CD. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So A, C and D. Okay. And then 1, 5, 3, 4, whatever you can see in the ascending order. So So as for the definition of set, if you go here, like if I write over here, so it labels elements, very less definitions would be there. Or if you go on the next, you can go set. So it is a collection of an unordered unique elements. Very simple definition. 
build an unordered collection of unique elements why it is unordered because there is no such orderness right? whatever we write we are not getting in the same orders so there is an order but that is an ascending order so that would be helpful to you right okay getting it <clears throat> So uh, let's say if there is one, two, three, four, five. If I want to add a first element, six, what I'll say that let's give a name to this n one. This is your n one. If I say n one plus a set three. Unsupported type for a set and set. Sorry, we have to do add. What add? Three. So is there any difference? No. Why? Because three is already present, right? So no duplications are allowed in set. In the same place, if I say n one dot add seven, n one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. There is a change. After 5, we have got 7 over there. So, this is your add. Now, in the list, you had something called as extend when you need to add more than one element. Here also. For more than one element, what you need to do is Mm, update n1 dot update and there in a set sorry in the set let's say um, 8 9 10 like that so n1 would be now 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 now a student have a misconceptions like update can also work similar in a set like let's say if uh, you see some variables Alphabets, I say. If this is your var, okay. I want to add some words to this now. So I will be taking var dot add. Now, if I have a word, I'll just say word. So why would we having a word? That's it. But if I have lot of words, mm, I'm adding them using add. Can I say? Oh, sorry, update also. <coughs> if you think like if you add like this, the problem would be that the lot of words would be added as a string individual strings right so this l l o t right so where was only having a c d g s and the word now see a c d g s and then l o t o and f and then w o r d is there obviously so words s is there So that's why we use this bracket in the update where it is here. This bracket. Right? So if we write now that var dot update, so don't forget to write this bracket. So otherwise you will be getting like this. Lot of elements. A lot of words. Now if I look on my var. I see lot of words. Clear? Okay. Now let's have two sets. Okay, A and B are having two numbers. Oh, sorry, two sets. Which consists of some integer numbers. Okay. 
Now we go for the common elements. <clears throat> And we can call it as the intersection in the sets. If you know, right? So intersections are about the A and B common elements. So intersection can be written in two different ways here, like A dot intersection. With B gives you that 4 is the number which is common in both the sets. And the second way of writing is A and B intersection. <coughs> Clear? Intersections are like this. Now, uh, if I take some different element. So uncommon elements in A as compared to B. So that would be A dot difference with this B. So A, what are the differences in A with compared to the B? 1, 2, 3. Because 4 is common. Right? Okay. Now, also you can write A minus B. 1, 2, 3. So if the same thing has to be copied, sorry, and to be pasted here as B compared to A, it would be B minus A. <coughs> B minus A. B dot difference of A. Hmm? And somewhat we also know something about union or we say combination of two sets that is A union B. If you say A union of B or B union of A whatever you write or A union of a union of B. Alright, I hope till here things are clear. Union, difference, intersections. Different different ways of writing I have showed you. Hmm? Okay. Now, uh, let's get back here. So clear copy, difference update, discard. Okay, leave update once for now. Intersection update. Difference update, symmetric difference. Uh, yeah, symmetric differences. Good one. Rest hmm. what are there? Clear, copy, pop, remove, discard. Clear, copy, pop, remove, discard. Uncommon elements in A and B we have seen, right? It's complete uncommon elements. From both the sets. Hmm. So complete uncommon elements can be taken from the symmetric difference, right? So 
a dot symmetric difference with b 1 2 3 5 6 7 with compared to a with compared to b everything 4 is the common one okay why it is isn't working what happened here hmm perfect fine okay so till here it is fine now there are some of the removal methods additions you have seen in the beginning now let's see some of the removal methods now how this works see the very first method i am discussing with you pop right so in dictionaries you have seen how do we remove the elements so let's say c is equals to a dot copy i'm making a copy of an element right now a union b dot copy all right uh, a is not defined oh, sorry a union b dot copy so c is having one two three four five six seven right hmm. now <coughs> If I want to remove some elements from here, I'll say like I want to remove five from here. So I'll say uh, C dot remove five. Hmm. Done. Very easy. Now, if I say C dot pop, what pop does? Deletes an element automatically. Right? In the rest cases, it deletes from the last what hair works from the last but it is from the first from the right hand side if everywhere it works from the right but here it works on the left in dictionary it works something else we will study today okay all right now so the last so, different, yeah so so can you repeat from complete uncommon elements i do i just got disconnected so I... uh from where this one so can you repeat from the symmetric difference part symmetric difference right okay see uh symmetric difference does uh, like it displays you the uncommon elements from both the sets like from the a and from the b from both sets. okay so like in the first what we did is difference a dot difference of b that gives you some uncommon element with verses of something like if i write a then i get only the difference in a if i write b i get b in symmetric what happens you get from the both of the sides that is of the symmetric difference okay removal methods we were doing uh, copy this was simple okay so i was removing five from here we have removed it pop then we just came here okay pop so in pop what we are doing in the rest cases like in the list what we have done pop removes the element from the last right that is the last element now insert as it, it we say that these are unordered right so elements are removed from the beginning so c dot pop of something gives you the first removal then you see two has been removed you write three will be removed and so on it will be good remove has removed five whatever the in the parenthesis you have done. now so what happens if you write c dot pop of so four so here pop does not takes any arguments like in the list we have given here it does not take any arguments right so we come to the different removal method called as discard so if i write c dot discard this four so see it has been removed so only three six and seven has been left now what is the importance of this card pop we have understood that it automatically removes remove we know that if you write remove it will remove now what is the difference between the remove and discard what remove does if the element exists it will remove if it not exist if an element is not existing if i write c dot remove 20 
234 it will give you a key error that 234 is not present but versus this if i write c dot discard of 234 right so if i write c dot it will give you no error and why this because what is the function of discard is like if the element is present it will remove if the element is not present you have to do nothing this functions work is if the element is not present nothing has to be done that's it if we go with the documentation you can get it offset dot I think discard would give you yeah so remove an element from a set if it is a member and if it is not a member do nothing that's it very simple okay like that remove the key view key errors okay so these are the things in the sets now uh, if you see c three six seven and what is b four five six seven okay If I make D which is equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right. But the C dot is a subset of this D. So that is true because C and D, if you compare, what do you find 3, 6, 7 and also 3, 6, 7 is there in the C. So we can say that C is somewhat a subset of D. It can be said. Right. <coughs> yeah. Similar, like whatever is a subset is the opposite. Or you can say that whatever comes as a subset gets an superset. So we can say that D is a superset of C. True. And you can see the superset meaning. of is super set no sorry is str not it is set report whether this set contains another set or not that is your d set contains another set or not 367 is a set and that is present in d that's it right so subset opposite is super set if it is true in a subset Definitely, if you reverse the things, you will getting the uh, superset. Okay, like that. And clearance is very easy. Like, if you want to clear something, you just try. It. You get a clear set. So these are the things in the set and bottom set. Okay. All right. Now coming to dictionary. Now these has got some key values pair, right? Here elements are in a pair. Some are keys, some are values. So we see as a KV pair. Now indexings, if we talk about indexings, are done here using your keys. Like very simple if you say. <coughs> Some basic things we are saying. Okay, some of the keywords I am writing from here. Uh, let's say I have um, let's say physics equals to mass. Okay. If I say some keywords like mass, this comes in somewhat, or if I say no, this comes in. This comes in mass. Oh, finish. Okay, so I can say that 
because physics is equals to gravity. <coughs> chemistry is equals to some something else. You can write some mass and density. Uh, we write some mathematics somewhere. There we write some algebra. Great. <coughs> CS has got some programming. Okay. So just physics, chemistry, mathematics are different different keywords we have written. Okay. Topic wise things now to define these all here in a subject, what we say subject comprise of all these, right? So there will be a braces, third braces, and then we will say that this the first one key should always be in strings. Felix has got some meanings, but what is that meaning? Because that has some values. For now, I'm making it right. Then a comma. Chemistry has got a keyword that is itself chemistry. And mathematics has got a keyword that is also. So subject is a type of a dictionary where you can find the keys and the values. Now if I see my subject, you will find that there is physics which is equals to gravity, chemistry is equals to density and mathematics equals to algebra. So if I say the subject dot get what is there in mathematics, so it says that in mathematics we have algebra if I say subject what do we have to study in physics let's say is gravity hmm? like that okay now so what is there written in chemistry and that is density very easy different things different ways of writing now, in a dictionary, you have got some of the methods, good methods, right? Okay. So, these are very important to learn. Now, you can use indexings and the loops and all. Okay. Like if we say, <coughs> we take some results. Or we take some pin codes. Um, just a minute. Let me take some from here. I see here some things. This is not copying. <coughs> okay. Uh, Let's have pen codes of Delhi. Okay. If we are taking pin codes of Delhi, let's say. So let me copy this. Copied. Pasting here. And it is written something like this. So central Delhi is having. So these are the pin codes, guys. Okay. Delhi pin codes. Central Delhi is 58, East Delhi 68, New Delhi 3, North Delhi 30, North East Delhi 7, North West Delhi 108, and like this. 
So if you want to make pin codes of Delhi, TPC would be. So I will be naming it like the center of Delhi has got 58. Next, East Delhi has got 68. Next, New Delhi. New Delhi has got three. Okay, done. So these are the Delhi pen codes. Now, we need to access some results. What we'll do is for i n d p c dot keys. Right? These are the keys. What are the keys? Center Delhi is Delhi. These are the keys. So print the keys of i. Oh, sorry, d p c. So these are the keys of your dictionaries the all these are the keys so what all are the values so by writing values at beginning your values these are the values and for the corresponding results you can take your items here to print those things so items could be central 3058 is 3068 near 33 and like that right and moreover, you can sorry, uh, you can write DPS dot keys. Even if you're writing, you print I, you will print your keys, and then you can go with I of um, or in the DPC. If you go Y in DPC, print I what it gives. Dictionary is not coming. By default, you get this DPC of I. This results. Okay, for the items and without items, you can take this Central Delhi, East Delhi, New Delhi, North Delhi, and all. Hmm. Now, so these are the things, or you can go with the values and all using this DPC dot values function. So 58, 68, 3, 30, 7, 100, 8, 7, and now using like what here you have got basically. Okay. So these are the things here in the dictionaries how we go with. Okay. And using this, you can make a lot of uh, things exactly. Like if I say Is it usable? What is the problem? Oh, you must pass it in next so, Sure. So we have got something where we can say, uh, this is a problem, not like this, uh, 
Uh, okay. All right, just a minute. So what you can see here in <clears throat> just things like okay leave it I'm making it up. Just leave it two minutes. So flip these because it is flip these with the pin codes. Three eight three thirty. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, okay, just a minute, just a minute. Shit, shit. Uh, now this can be a dictionary where I can say that uh, some city names are there as cities, okay, and some pin codes are there as. Pin codes are there as what is there? Pin codes. Hmm? And this data is to be given as PC, and I'll say that index is equals to state. Let's run this. Object data frame is object. Hmm. Now you come to DF and it looks something like this. Okay, so there it is. Delhi city pin codes. What with the help of dictionary I made, right? So particularly what you have made that these are your cities. You see, actually this is looking something big, but this is what you are going with doing. You are going to do with your projects. <coughs> So dictionaries are to be very much uh, learned carefully, right? You have to learn dictionaries very carefully and very nicely, you can say. Uh, 
all come down. down, down, down. You see actually how many codes lines. This is three lines, four line, five and six lines, and you make a table. And you can download it. Okay. So these are the things in your dictionaries. Uh, let me start with the tutorial.